Hello, everyone. My name is Luca Weishaupt. Today, I have the pleasure of presenting a paper in Pranav Rajpurkar's Harvard Medical AI Lab. Uh, this paper is called Small Cap Lightweight Image Captioning Prompted with Retrieval Augmentation and was published 30th of September of this year. Um, it has some really cool innovation that I can't wait to tell you guys about. So what is image captioning? Let's start from square one. Image captioning is simply the task of taking an image and producing a textual description of that image. The four images we see here originate from the COCO captioning data set, which is a data set of natural images. Uh, it contains half a million captions describing over 330,000 images. And for each image in the training and validation set, there are five independent human generated captions. So the motivation for the current work is that traditional image captioning models are working, uh, are moving towards increasing model size and using more and more data to train their models, which is computationally expensive, especially when you need to retrain or fine tune these models for different end users or different data domains. Uh, different solutions have been proposed. Uh, notably reducing the model size or the number of trainable parameters. ClipCap and iTuning are two methods that uh, are quite similar to the proposed method, where the idea is that you take an image, you pass it through a pre-trained image encoder, which in this case is a clip model, then pass that into a pre-trained language decoder, a GPT-2 model, and I will be getting into what those models are in a second, and hopefully output a textual description. Uh, however, these uh, CLIP and GPT-2 models were not trained for one another, so they don't know how to communicate. The solution is to create a mapping in between the two, and uh, since the image encoder and language decoder are pre-trained, you can just keep them frozen and only train this mapping, which significantly reduces the number of trainable parameters. And the current work improves on this by further reducing the uh, number of trainable parameters and uh, improving domain transfer, notably training free domain transfer by leveraging a data store and uh, retrieval based uh, caption augmentation. So. Let's get into what all of that means. Uh, here we have the CLIP model again, and the CLIP model uh, is a model that learns visual concepts from large text image pairs. So we can see in the description, let me just grab my laser pointer here, that we have uh, our collection of images and our collection of textual captions that describe those images. These are all paired. Um, and then we pass the text through a text encoder, the images through an image encoder. And the idea is that hopefully they extract or encode similar concepts. Um, and we evaluate that by uh, trying to maximize the terms on the diagonal of this matrix, which is created by multiplying the embeddings together and minimizing the uh, elements that are off diagonal. Um, these models have impressive zero-shot capabilities, which you can leverage with clever prompting. Um, so once trained, you can prompt a model that is given an image with a prompt like this image contains and then have it complete uh, that sentence. We demonstrated uh, the zero-shot capabilities in the medical domain. Uh, recently with Chegg Zero for chest X-ray captioning uh, earlier this year. So uh, I guess notably CLIP is also part of, or came out of OpenAI. Next, GPT-2. And since everybody is talking about GPT-3 right now, I thought I would have GPT-3 explain what uh, GPT-2 is. Uh, you can see GPT-2 is a a machine learning model that can generate text. It was trained on 
very large corpus uh, corpora of data that contains text from uh, news articles or books. And the model is, is um, very good at generating text, especially when that text uh, falls within the domain that it was trained in. Finally, uh, we get to how small cap works. And I will remind you, the idea is we have an input image and we are trying to create a textual description of what this image contains. The first step in small cap is to engineer our prompt. But instead of having one fixed prompt, they augment this prompt for every image through uh, image to text retrieval, which uses this data store. Now the data store contains uh, captions, captions of similar images. So the way it works is that they pass the input image through the clip vision encoder to generate the image embedding. So to generate the uh, embedding of the visual concepts. Next, you have, uh, you pass the captions in the data store through the clip text encoder. And uh, again, the idea here is that the textual captions, uh, textual concepts will be embedded, uh, encoded in a way that is similar to the way that the vision concepts are uh, encoded. And uh, notably, you can do this caption encoding just once and then retrieve the pre-embedded uh, captions. Uh, now, the next step is to get the K most similar uh, captions to the image embedding using cosine similarity between the two embeddings. This is done using beam search. In this example here, we see the authors used k is equal to four to then generate the prompt that we have here. Um, the prompt always starts with similar images show, followed by the four retrieved captions from our data store, and then followed by the static, this image shows. And this will be our prompt for the GPT-2 model to then tell us what our current image contains. However, uh, we also want to harness the, uh, the information that is still encoded in the image. So uh, using the embedding from the clip vision model um, and the uh, text prompt that we pass into the GPT-2 model, we have a cross attention layer. So every uh, embedding layer in the GPT-2 model actually attends to the last hidden state of the clip vision model. And I'll get into how exactly that works on the next slide here. Um, attention, uh, cross attention in this case, because we're going between the two modalities of image and language, uh, works by taking the softmax of the query queue with the uh, key K uh, and multiply that by the value. And there's a normalization as well. Um, notably, the query here originates from the image uh, features, the embedded image features, whereas the key and values are embeddings of the text features. You have um, an attention head that consists of weighted queries, keys, and values in this attention function. Uh, and you can form a multi-head attention layer by simply concatenating these heads and uh, weighing them again. Now, all of these weight parameters are the tunable parameters of the small cap model. And you can uh, play around with how many parameters you put in it, uh, as we will see in the results section. And here's just a visual representation of what cross-attention can look like. Uh, so for a caption like a bike and a dog on the sidewalk outside a red building, which is shown in the image, we can see that for the bike token, uh, we are attending to the part of the image with the bike, whereas for the dog token, we are attending to the part of the image with the dog. Now, to train the model, the authors use cross entropy loss, which for a um, generated caption of M tokens is computed as um, 
the log of the probability for the reference token at the ith index conditioned on the um, all of the references for prior indices. So this is done in an auto regressive manner um, and conditioned on the prompt demonstration, which uh, we talked about earlier. The image features from the clip uh, vision encoder and the weights in our cross attention layer. So finally, you output a, uh, a caption as seen here. And now, again, what is really impressive is that uh, this data store can be enhanced using data from in-domain and out-of-domain uh, caption from multiple modalities. And I'll get into that a little bit more as we look at the results here. So the uh, let me walk you through what we see in this graph. Um, Notably, the, co uh, the small cap model was trained with only 7 million trainable parameters, which is actually very lightweight compared to other models. And um, it was trained only on the COCO data set, whereas we'll be seeing it evaluated for other data sets as well. Here in this larger graph, we have the small cap model's performance in green. Uh, whereas other lightweight models are shown in yellow, and we remember iTuning and ClipCap we've looked at previously. Camel is another lightweight model that requires more pre-training, however. Um, and we see that when trained, uh, oh, I guess in blue here, we also have the state-of-the-art larger models uh, for Coco. Um, and we can see that small cap, when uh, evaluated in domain, so with, when trained and tested on Coco, uh, performs well competitively, but not nothing too uh, impressive here, apart from the fact that it is getting uh, competitive results with orders of magnitude of uh, fewer parameters. But when evaluated out of domain, and we can see that here in the uh, smaller graph, so when evaluated on no caps, and again, only trained on COCO, um, small cap outperforms other small scale models. And in this case, even outperforms the larger Oscar model. We can attribute this to the uh, data store. So um, by uh, improving the data store with in-domain captions, you get uh, improved performance. We see that in this table down here um, where you have the, uh, what we see here is which data is in the data store, so just the COCO data or in-domain data, uh, and the scores that it receives on different uh, data sets, like the Flickr 30K, uh, the VizWiz, and MSR VTT are shown here, and you can see consistently uh, significant increases in the performance by just um, improving the data store. And you can do that by simply adding more data, um, more captions from the domain to your data store. Um, this comes at no extra training cost. So you don't need to retrain the model um, for it to get improved performance. And that's really the, the key takeaway from this paper, um, the, the, the innovation that came from this paper. Uh, yeah, I think I've covered everything here. All right, so we can take a look at how much the model is exploiting the data uh, data from the um, in-domain data store by uh, looking at what fraction of the retrieved captions for the prompt augmentation come from which data set. And you can see, apart from the fact that the web data set was always a very popular choice for the retrieval, you also have increased retrieval rates for the in-domain data, um, as we can see here by the larger green, purple, and orange um, partitions. Uh, and notably, these captions um, can come from anywhere, really. So you could even have 
video captions, audio caption, image-based narratives, and other types of modalities uh, that can enhance your model's performance in a training-free manner just by adding new captions from anywhere to your data store. And here again, we see the improvement uh, that this uh, prompt augmentation through the retrieval of captions from the data store makes. Uh, we have the model's performance evaluated at different parameters uh, scales um, and can just see, again, the significant jump in performance uh, when using retrieval augmentation versus not using retrieval augmentation. So let's finally look at a qualitative example here. Um, we have the image from the data set uh, in the top column, uh, top row, and then uh, the yellow, uh, the, the red and green dots here are the retrieved captions in the uh, augmented prompt. And you can see that uh, the Coco data set, for example, didn't contain many references to uh, camels, which is uh, why you see a reference to a brown horse here, for example, or not many references to the uh, game Pokemon, um, which is why the uh, output of the small cap model when only using in-domain data is not very good. But when you augment it using um, the out-of-domain data, uh, so uh, no. <laughs> I got that backwards. So when only using the Coco captions, you get uh, in the in the data store, you don't get good performance. But when using in-domain data, um, then uh, then the generated captions improve significantly. There we go. So in conclusion, small cap can perform on par with other uh, small scale captioning models. Uh, it outperforms other models when uh, evaluated on out-of-domain data. Uh, and this impressive uh, domain transfer, which it does training-free, uh, is thanks to its clever prompt augmentation using the data store. Uh, here are my references. And uh, I will also note that the authors have uh, put their code on GitHub uh, in this repository, which is actually maintained quite well and documented well. They even have a demo that you can run through. So I highly recommend that you go and check that out. Thank you.